thought of is the fraction of times an event occurs or the degree of belief about an event. We then would like to use this probability to measure the chance of something occurring in an experiment. As we previously mentioned in this video series, we often quantify uncertainty in the data, uncertainty in the machine learning model, and uncertainty in the prediction produced by the model. Quantifying uncertainty requires the idea of a random variable, which is a function that maps an outcome of a random experiment to a set of properties that we're interested in. Associated with the random variable is a function that measures the probability that a particular outcome or a particular set of outcomes will occur. This is called the probability distribution. We're going to present three concepts that define a probability space, sample space, the events, and the probability of an event in this video. And we're going to see how they relate to a fourth concept called the random variable. The theory of probability aims at defining a mathematical structure to define and to describe uh, random outcomes of experiments. For example, when tossing a single coin, we cannot determine the outcome. But by doing a large number of coin tosses, we can observe a regularity in the average outcome. Using this mathematical structure of probability, the goal is to perform automated reasoning, and in this sense, probability generate, generalizes logical reasoning. philosophical basis of probability and how it should be somehow related to what we think should be true in a logical sense was studied by Cox and James. Another way to think about it is if we're precise about our common sense, we end up constructing probabilities. James identified three mathematical criteria which must apply to all plausibilities. The degree of plausibility are represented by real numbers. These numbers must be based on rules of common sense. And the resulting reasoning must be consistent with the three following meanings of the word consistent. Consistency or non-contradiction, when the same result can be reached through different means, the same plausibility value must be found in all cases. Honesty, all available data must be taken into account. Re reproducibility. If our state of knowledge about two problems are the same, then we must assign the same degree of plausibility to both of them. The Cox-James theorem proves these plausibilities to be sufficient to define the universal mathematical rules that apply to plausibility p up to transformation by an arbitrary monotonic function. There are three distinct ideas that are often confused when discussing probabilities. First, the first is the idea of a probability space, which allows us to quantify the idea of a probability. However, we mostly do not work directly in the basic probability space. Instead, we work with random variables, the second idea which transfers the probability to a more convenient, often numerical space. The third idea is the idea of distribution, or a law associated with the random variable. Modern probability is based on a set of axioms proposed by Kolmogorov that introduce three concepts, sample size, event space, and probability measured. The probability space models a real-world process, referred to as an experiment, with a random outcome. Sample space omega is a set of all possible outcomes of the experiment. For example, two successive coin tosses have a sample space heads heads, tail tail, head tail, tail head. The event space A is the space of potential results of the experiment. A subset A of the sample space omega is in the event space capital A if, the, if at the end of the experiment we can observe whether a particular outcome omega, a W is in omega, is in A. The event space A is obtained by considering the collection of subsets of omega 
And for discrete probability distributions, this is often the power set of omega. The probability P uh, associated with an event A is a number P of A that measures the probability or degree of belief that an event will occur. We call P of A the probability of A. Probability of a single event must lie on the interval 0, 1, and the total probability over all outcomes in the sample space omega must be equal to 1. That is, P of omega equals 1. Given a probability space, omega, A, and P, we want to use it to model some real-world phenomena. In machine learning, we often avoid explicitly referring to the probability space, but instead refer to probabilities on quantities of interest, which we denote T. Here we refer to T as the target space and refer to elements T as states. We introduce a target space function X that takes things in omega and maps them to T and returns a particular quantity of interest X that's a value of T. This associated mapping from Q to T is called a random variable. For example, in the case of tossing two coins and counting the number of heads, a random variable x maps the three possible outcomes, heads heads to two, heads tails to one, tails heads to one, and tails tails to zero. In this particular case, t is zero, one, and two, and it is the probabilities on elements of t that we're interested in. For sample space omega and a finite target space t, the function corresponding to a random variable is essentially a lookup table. Consider a statistical experiment where we model an unfair game consisting of drawing two coins from a bag with replacement. There are coins from the United States and the United Kingdom. The ones from the US are denoted by a dollar sign, and the ones from UK are pounds. The state space or sample space omega for this experiment is then dollar dollar, dollar pound, pound dollar, pound pound. Let's assume that the composition of the bag of coins is such that a draw returns uh, a random dollar sign with probability 0.3. The event we're interested in is the total number of times the repeated draw returns a dollar sign. Let's define a random variable x that maps our sample space omega to a target space t, which denotes the number of times we draw a dollar out of the bag. We can see from the preceding sample space that we can get zero dollars, one dollar, or two dollars. So our target space is zero, one, and two. The random variable x, a function or lookup table, can be represented as a table with the following data. The probability that x equals 2 is the probability of dollar dollar, which is 0.3 times 0.3, or 0.09. The probability that x equals 1 is the probability of dollar then pound, union pound then dollar. Because they're independent events, this is equal to the probability of dollar and pound plus the probability of pound and dollar, which is 0.3 times 0.7 squared, or 0.42. The probability that x equals 0 is the probability of pound pound, which is equal to 0.7 squared, or 0.49. In this calculation, we, created, we equated two different concepts, the probability of the output of x and the probability of the samples in omega. For example, we say, said that the probability that x equals zero was equal to the probability of pound pound. Now, probability theory and statistics are often presented together, but they concern different aspects of uncertainty. One way of contrasting them is by the kinds of problems they're considered. Using probability, we can consider a model of some process where the underlying uncertainty is captured by random variables. 
and we use the rules of probability to derive what happens. In statistics, we observe that something has happened and try to figure out the underlying process that explains the observations. In this sense, machine learning is close to statistics in its goals to construct a model that adequately represents the process that generated the data. We can use the rules of probability to obtain a best fitting model for some data. In the next video, we'll talk about discrete and continuous probabilities.